Hello and welcome one young world delegates to this session. My name is Sebastian Arevalo Sanchez. I will be moderating today's discussion titled Eradicating Modern Slavery in the 21st Century. I'm co-founder and CEO of Pasos Libres, Latin American representative of Traffic Analysis Hub and one young world ambassador. I have dedicated the last six years of my life to reinventing the way of managing the risk and impacts of modern slavery through technological innovation, data analytics, education, and corporate social responsibility. Today, I will be talking with a remarkable man that has knocked out adversity more than once and has become the inspiration for many. I'm trying to be joined by Bilal Wifaz, professional boxing champion. He's champion of the Amateur Boxing Association of England Light Middleweight and has represented England England internationally in six occasions and times. Welcome, Bilal. How are you? I'm doing great. Nice to be here. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you, Sebastian. Nice to meet you too. And thanks for joining us today. Uh, Bilal, your connection to the topic of human trafficking and modern slavery is personal. Could you share with us a bit more about your experience as a young man coming to the United Kingdom and journey once arriving at the age of 14? I was living in Nigeria. I was a kid. My mom treated me badly. My dad was never there, but he took me to an uncle. And then my uncle said that, Bilal, after certain years, he said, Bilal, we're going to London to meet your father. And I said, okay, let's go. Um, we got to London and I was like, where's my dad? You know, like my dad. And he said, stay in this house. Your dad is going to come and meet you. My dad never came. And that went on for months and months and months and months and months. I was asking, where's my dad? Where's my dad? He never turned up. So what I did was I started trying to go outside, but they said, don't go out because I needed to be taken somewhere else. They didn't tell me that. I only realized that now. They didn't go and let me go out because people will come or the police might ask, why is this young boy not going to school? So I decided to one day after coming out several times and going back in, I decided to run. And then when I ran, I ran so far that I couldn't, I couldn't find my way back. And I realized that this is it. I'm on my own. And since then, I've been a child of the government. I've been a number. F1062892. That is my number. So that is how everything happened. And then I've been in the government. I never had no one to tell me where to go or what to do. I was just a number and I was just a file. And everybody there had their parents or had their kids or had their husbands or had their families that they need to take care of. So we are just whack for them. But they don't understand that we're human beings as well. So one day I was going to school and I was in the gym no, in the gym, we went for like a sports day in a Bruno University and I saw a man carrying a pack of gloves and I ran up to him and I said, hey, I would like to try boxing and I wanted to see what's going on. I want to see if I can do it because I had so much passion, so much power, so much to give that it's, it was overflowing and pain because I never had my mom, my father, all my family got taken away. So I needed to let it out. Within the first day of going to the gym, they realized that there is, this boy has been hurt because I was hit in the bag like, and I started crying. I had tears down my face. I was hit in the bag and it was, it was not, it wasn't physically painful, but it was emotionally painful. And, uh, They gave me more time. They spoke to me. They said, we can help you talk to us. I never talk to anyone. I keep it to myself. And I realized that every time I left that gym, that boxing gym, I, I feel more relieved, more lighter, uh, more spiritual, more relaxed. I wasn't carrying the load and the burden that I've been carrying. I, I felt like I was forgiven. Every time I go to the gym, I was forgiven things. I was dropping things that I did not need. All the worries and all the pains, I was dropping it. And the more I go there, the more I drop it, the lighter I become and the more powerful I became. 
I think that it's important to mention to the one your work delegates in this session that modern slavery is kind of, you know, an umbrella term that focuses on any situation of exploitation that a person cannot refuse or leave because of threats, violence, coercion, deception, abuse of power, or any kind of economic or social vulnerability. Nowadays, there are more than 40 million uh, victims of modern slavery, and the most common forms of modern slavery are human trafficking and forced labor. And it's really important to highlight that they can occur both in the context of organized crime, but also in the supply chains of businesses. Um, Bilal, you, you have endured a 16 years struggle to remain in the United Kingdom during which you found your passion for boxing. Could you tell us uh, about your career and journey as a boxer? And mm, you know what have been some of the challenges you face while navigating your career? So what my what it meant to me to be to have that boxing, it's a structure. When you build a house, you need a foundation. When you build a car, you need a frame before you put the glass and before you build. When you when you build a clone of a human being, you need the bone. You know, you need the bones and then the flesh will go on top of that. So you need the structure the rock, the foundation, and that is a goal, a destination, a career, a point that when you see yourself 10 years, you know that you're going to be there and you will be okay. Now, <clears throat> the other question you ask me, what is the adversary? What is the point? What is the things that prevented me? What is the struggle? In anything you do that is worth doing, that you will get something rewardable out of it, there is going to be problems. The greater the risk, the greater the problems, the greater the, the reward. So the greater the big profit, the greater the risk and the greater the loss if you ever take it. So there's always going to be obstacles, barriers, boundaries, uh, heebie-jeebies, calamities, chaos along the way. But that is the point where you should not surrender. When you are... When you get to the point where jumping is afraid of jumping, that is the point where you need to jump or else you're going to stay in the same position your whole life. I've been here, I can't work for 20 years. I couldn't sign a contract for 230,000 pounds. I couldn't go to the Olympics. I represented England and England wanted to deport me to Nigeria and I represented England. I was offered contracts, I'm, I couldn't do it. So. After 20 years of fighting, I got a, a little bit of breakthrough because I didn't surrender. So I'm signed to Sports Direct, I'm signed to Everlast, I'm signed to, yeah, things are good now, but not better because I can't still travel, you know, I'm still trying to find a country. I'm stateless. I don't belong to any country. So yeah, wow. it's always problem. Wow. Yeah, no, I, I love your, your thinking and I, I can, you know, notice like, you find your postcode, your root, your motivation, but even when you find it, you have to fight a lot, not just physically talking, but even, you know, to gain your rights, actually to make your dreams come true. And, you know, your, your experience and, and the challenges that you have faced make clear that eradicating human trafficking and other forms of modern slavery is just one part of this global challenge. For survivors like you, support and I are both crucially needed once freed from exploitation. Uh, according with Professor Bilal, <laughs> we need actually help survivors to find a postcode, a route, a way to go, and provide the motivation necessarily to not surrender and keep going to achieve the dreams, basically to rebuild the life projects as you did. So considering the, the above Bilal, what are some of the challenges that asylum seekers and individuals who are stateless, as you mentioned, experience when navigating complex migration systems like that in the United Kingdom? You will have obstacle of kind of like racism. Go back to your country, you're not wanted here. Um, you will have the obstacles and the worries of not belonging to be empty. You will have the, the obstacle of being uncertain when you don't know what might happen. 
you know, you will have the obstacle of not having a focus, a path, a postcode, a career, because like that, they can make a decision and the decision is taken from you. So you can't go, they say, okay, this is it. You've been here 17 years. You have to go back now. Or you've been trafficked here. Where did you come from? This country. Okay, now we're going to send you back there. And then it all happens again and again and again and again and again. Anybody that's going to be trafficked, the problem you're going to have is your time wasted. Mm-hmm. It's not knowing where to go from the point that you arrive. But there is a way that we can eradicate that. We can amend it. We can shed some light upon the place that are darker. It takes certain people that have passion, you know. When you have a little kid that's been trafficked, there has to be a law that could help them from a young age, like a facility that says, okay, you're a young kid. This is what you need to do now. We are going to help you get this and get there. And then from here, you will take your life into your hands. But nobody has that. What people have is your traffic, you're in the system, your number, you stay in a hotel or a hostel or house. But then they don't understand that we are kids. We don't know anything. We need guidance. We need to understand that whatever decision we make will have a repercussions, consequences, calamities. And nobody knows that because we're kids. But if somebody, a group of people, young, one young world could say, Okay, your traffic, this is a safe haven for you. Come here, it's a safe shelter. We will give you ideas, we will give you advices that when you get to a certain age, you have this opportunity. Maybe one young world could hire the traffic people to work for them. Maybe one young world could have connection with other companies or other events or the charity. And then those kids can work for them. And then they will have a beautiful future. There's always a way. It's just that somebody needs to think. And I never had that. If I had that, I would be different right now, you know? I mean, you, as I mentioned at the beginning of this conversation, you literally knock out adversity and you are doing great, great, great things. And imagine if you do this basically by yourself, imagine what other children and people can do with some support. Uh, Bilal, it, it has been a, a really interesting conversation, but I, I don't want to close it without mentioning mentioning to our delegates that, you know, mother slavery is something that also happened in the supply chain of the, of the companies and the businesses that produce the products and services that we consume every day. So I, I really want to encourage our One Young World delegates to, uh, you know, ask companies to continue working to make supply chains more transparent and also, you know, become themselves uh, responsible consumers. Uh, Bilal, do you have any final message for our delegates or recommendation? Remember that they are, they are entrepreneurs, social leaders, future politicians, people that is working in several backgrounds. So I think they, they can help us. Uh, to, to take action against mother slavery and, you know, help uh, survivors to s- overcome this, this terrible issue. So I don't know if you have, from your experience, any advice or final message for, for them. We need to take drastic steps to pivot our current trajectory, because if we don't, it's going to get worse and worse. I read the news today, today, just right now, about a half an hour ago, there is a politician a husband and wife in Nigeria, politician. They were caught bringing a young kid into the country, into London, and they wanted to sell the organs of the kids. See? And I bet that is not the first time they've done it. They've probably it's done not. it before. So if they need somebody that want to help the young kids or organization or ideas that needs ideas and things that will touch people in their heart, yeah, they can, they can, they can contact me. And I can help with that. But of course, I need to pay for my rent. I need to pay for food. I need to pay for expenses. So I need, if you want me to work, I, I'm happy to work. And I don't have to, this will be something that will come from my heart because I want to help. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bilal, for this interesting conversation. I think that 
you know, to say a lot of things that should and must be taken into consideration by all the delegates. And of course, delegates, thank you. Thank you very much for having been part of this session.